So there's a lot of reasons why this could be happening. And no matter what you believe, religion does have tangible social, political, and economic impacts on the U.S. So to discuss the reasons why Americans are losing their faith and the potential implications this country could face because of this, I spoke earlier with David Silverman, president of American Atheists. Well, it's more than a generational thing, although the generation certainly has to do with it. Uh, the growth of secularism in America is really centered on the young people. Uh, over 30 percent of the young people are unaffiliated with religion. Now, what you were talking about before was that people are somewhat still religious, even though they're calling themselves unaffiliated. That's partially true. What we're also seeing in America is a rise in atheism, and that is coming from two parts. First of all, people are becoming atheists more and more because they're studying religion and second because of the stigma against atheism is is being lessened people are coming out as atheists so people who used to define themselves as religious but were really atheists are now having the um, the courage to come out and call themselves non-religious people and we think that trend is going to continue uh, because um, we think it's the natural progression of learning and the natural progression of, uh, of conversation about religion. And some critics might say that religion is antiquated. Thoughts about abortion, gay rights, etc. They Most people uh, simply don't agree with that opinion. Uh, so my question to you is simple. Does religion have a place in the 21st century? No, it does not. Uh, religion uh, hasn't had a place in for some time. Uh, but now that we're looking at the 21st century, now that we know that there is, I mean, this is the 21st century. We know there's no invisible man in the sky. We, we do know this now. We know this just as well as we know that there's no Santa Claus. And people are finally figuring this out. They're learning, they're talking, they're hearing, uh, they're picking up their Bibles and actually reading it, which is something that they haven't done before. And that makes atheists uh, in and of itself. As we move on into the rest of this century, we're going to see a continued growth in the disaffiliation from organized religions because people are realizing that organized religion is totally useless. But, but uh, David, let me stop the, you there. Let's, uh, let's look at the uh, social impacts that religion has. I mean, it does strengthen communities and bring them together to clean up parks and run soup kitchens, for instance. So we can't argue that no good comes from religion. It also instills values in people that help guide their moral compass, right? No, I would say no to both of those questions. It provides a medium for people to do good. Yes, it does. But without that medium, people still do good. If you look at secular democracies like Norway, Sweden, Denmark, there's plenty of good, solid community and charity work going on there without the need for religion. And as far as the application of moral codes, no, what religion does is it takes credit for a person's individual moral, moral judgments. I am a good person. And another person might say they're a good person because God tells them to be a good person. We're both good people. Religion simply takes the credit for you being a good person. But most people are good without God. Uh, that's certainly your opinion. You're uh, one of the atheists. Um, so tell me what atheism has to offer for the U.S. Um, because religion, they say, it not only impacts the, so the social lives of people, but it also impacts the economics uh, of the U.S. And there's been multiple studies saying that, uh, that religion does have a direct, tangible effect on the economy, especially in developing nations. Uh, can you talk about that a little bit? Well, sure, religion has the effect because it's given the opportunity to have an effect. It's not the only thing that has an effect. And when you look at the way religion works in America, I mean, you mentioned Mitt Romney being the first Mormon president, uh, potentially being the first Mormon president. The Mormon church just spent $20 million to stop other people from getting married. They spent their own money to enforce their religious beliefs on non-Mormons. We find this repugnant. We find this disgusting. And no, this is not useful. And yes, it is immoral. So what we're seeing here is religion taking credit for, being, for bringing in good morals while totally disassociating itself from the responsibility that it has of letting people live their own lives. People in America don't want religions telling them, other people's religions telling them 
what their morals are. We'll make our own moral decisions. And that's what atheism brings to the table. You're already making your own moral decisions. With atheism, you get to take credit for it and the responsibility. And that's David, what let's talk really about, is. since you since you did go ahead and bring up Mitt Romney, let's talk about religion and politics. President Obama is a Christian. Mitt Romney is a Mormon. How does their religion affect their leadership abilities? And that's the big question that we would like to see answered. We don't really care about what, for, what religion they profess. I don't really care that Mitt Romney is a Mormon. I care that Mitt Romney has not spoken against the Mormon church's disgusting infringement on public life in California. I don't really care about the fact that President Obama is a Christian. I do care about the fact that he has left the faith-based initiatives intact, which funnel federal money to mostly Christian churches. What we care about is how they let their religion usurp their authority or usurp their allegiance rather to the Constitution of the United States. That's a problem. It's not about being religious. It's whether or not your religion takes a higher place in your mind to the country at large. And That's David, we are, uh, we are out of time, but I just want to ask you really quickly, yes or no, um, is there such a thing as separation between church and state these days? Yes, but not very much in America. All right, David Silverman, president of the American Atheist, thank you so much for your opinion, sir.